Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear, and this is the extended review of the different versions of the Eagle Tac MX25 L3C. All right, here we have a couple of versions of the MX25 L3C. If you've ever watched any of my other Eagle Tac videos, you know this is going to be a long one. They have a lot going on with their lights, a lot of different interface things. You know, you've got kit, non kit, you've got different LED versions. These are really cool lights, so uh, if you're interested in them, I think the video will be worthwhile for you to watch. If you want to watch a shorter version, we also have a quick and dirty version of this. Uh, check the link in the description. A little bit more abbreviated version of this. So anyway, what I have here out of the box is the kit version of the MX25 L3C. This is the one with the six Nichia 219 LEDs. In the box, I have the one with the six XPG2 LEDs. So what's the difference between the two? Big difference is going to be the tint of these. So this one has a nice high CRI tint but that gives you a lot lower output. So on max output, uh, the Nichia 219 is gonna give you 1,810 ANSI FL1 lumens. On max output, the uh, XPG2 is gonna give you 2,450 lumens. So pretty decent amount of higher output on the XPG2, and it's also gonna be a little bit of a different beam, but you don't get the color temperature that you get with the Nichias. Some people like it, some people don't. I'll take them both outside and I'll have the color temperature of the camera set as close as I can to what I actually see as possible so you can kind of get an idea of what they both look like. So let's go ahead and set this one to the side. We're going to bring it back in here in just a second. Let's pull this out, show you what you get on the inside. User manual. Like I said, there's a lot going on with these lights. There's some interesting hidden features that you have in the interface and I'm going to touch on all those in the video, but if you want to go over them again, this is definitely a good read. It's got some specifications in here, so a couple things on there. I talked about the uh, the lumens on there. So you've got 1.6 down to 350 hours uh, versus 1.4 down to 350 on the Nichia 219. Uh, four brightness levels plus seven auxiliary levels, lots of different flashing modes, and these run on three 18650s or six CR123 batteries. So yeah, again, lots of good information on here. Definitely take a look at that. And then you have some other stuff, talking about registering your Eagle Tac, and then the light. A lot of their larger lights come in these nice cloth bags. Good way to store it in your backpack or wherever, just to keep it from getting all dinged up and scratched up. Obviously not essential. These lights can take a awful lot of abuse. You know, I wouldn't encourage it, and <laughs> don't chuck it against your driveway or anything like that. But uh, if you want, they come with a nice little cloth bag that you can store it in. So there is the non-kit XPG2. I'll show you the stuff that comes with both of them. Some other stuff that you have in here. So you have these battery holders. What these are for, or if you want to use CR123 batteries, so if you want to do the six CR123s, you can use these. Two batteries will slide in there, and uh, kind of keeps them from rattling around in the in the flashlight. Not essential, and uh, it's not that big of a deal. But some people like them. You can also use them as battery holders. You have a lanyard in there, pretty nice lanyard, some spare O-rings. So all that stuff comes with both. Let's talk about some of the stuff that comes with the kit versus the non-kit. Eagle Tax is one of those companies that I always recommend people get the kit, not just because I make more money, but because they're super, super useful, especially with these lights, the MX and the SX series of lights. The two biggest things are uh, it has a rear switch, which is really useful at night. You know, if you're wearing gloves or you're kind of fumbling around trying to find that side switch, it's really easy to find the rear of the light. So you got that nice rear switch on there and both the switches do the exact same thing. So there's no interface changes. And you also have the stainless steel bezel. Stainless steel bezel isn't that big of a, deal, big of a deal, but the nice thing is you can thread it off and that's how you thread on all the filters and diffusers and everything. And this does not have that. So you cannot get the non-kit version and then upgrade it to the kit version because the parts are different. There's actually an internal piece that uh, allows the rear switch to work. So you don't have that, you don't have the threaded bezel. So just keep that in mind. If you want the kit version, get it up front because you can't get it after the fact. But let's take a look at the LEDs. So the LEDs actually look pretty similar just looking down in them. You have six LEDs, each with their own reflector down in there. That actually produces a pretty cool beam. And like you saw with the numbers, a decent amount of lumens. Uh, so you have the six XPG2 LEDs, the six Nichia 219 LEDs. If you had the non kit of both of these, it'd be kind of hard to tell them apart unless you look really closely at the LEDs because uh, it's not really a whole lot differentiating them. You know, you've got the same markings on them. They don't 
mark the difference in the LEDs or anything like that. So physically, these lights are the same. You know, you're not gonna see any difference. You got the same size bezel and all that kind of stuff, same size battery tube. It's just the LEDs themselves that are different. Of course, other than the kit versus non-kit. So, powered by six CR123 batteries or three 18650s. As always, I recommend using 18650s. Use six CR123s if you're rarely, rarely gonna be using the light. So like every six or 12 months, you know, you're throwing it in a backpack for emergency purposes. You're keeping it in a cabin or something like that. Then use CR123s because they have fantastic shelf life and they also have a really wide temperature operating range. Otherwise, the vast majority of people are gonna be way better off using 18650s because they're rechargeable. They'll save you a lot of money in the long run. And the ones we recommend these days are the Olight 3400 milliamp hour 18650s. They're super high quality. They're a few dollars cheaper than the ones from other brands, the other high quality brands. They come with a nice little carrying case as a freebie, so that's kind of cool. And uh, they're really good batteries. So these are the ones we recommend. And uh, just to save you a little bit of money, we'll have the batteries, the flashlight, the charger, and all that stuff in a bundle, save you a little bit of money. <clears throat> so let's take a little bit closer look at the lights. We're just gonna take a look at the kit version. Just keep in mind that this and this do not come with the non-kit version. So you have that side switch. Nice machining on this. I really, I really like the way the Eagle Tech lights look. Relatively simple, but they still look pretty cool. There's the rear switch on there. That's what it looks like without the rear switch, just a flat tail cap. And they do tail stand. Actually, both of them will tail stand even if you have that rear switch on there. If you're the person that likes to tail stand, and then there you can see the LEDs and the reflector area a little bit better. There's that stainless steel bezel. You can actually remove that if you want. Uh, it doesn't hold the lens in or anything like that. A lot of flashlights out there, when you remove the reflector, the lens will come out <laughs> and the O-ring and everything. You'll have your LEDs and your reflector exposed. This one doesn't do that. So you can take the, the stainless steel bezel off there. I don't know why you would want to because it looks kind of cool and it also helps protect the bezel from impact in case you drop it. Lanyard attachment point is right there in case you want to attach lanyard. Let's open this up. Actually, we'll open up the other one because I already have batteries in this one. Show you what you have on the inside of it. So here is the tail cap. It's kind of cool because this actually spins around. So you orient those prongs to make sure they line up with the holes. Start screwing it on and this will spin. And then there's the inside. So there's no battery carrier to worry about. The battery holder is actually integrated into the flashlight. So as long as you get the orientation of the batteries right, you don't have to worry about losing or breaking a carrier or anything like that. It's actually machined out of the aluminum, so uh, it's nice and solid. So I think it's the aluminum, maybe it's plastic. No, I think it's aluminum. Okay, so let's go ahead and stick three batteries in there just so you can see what that looks like. The, uh, the negative end goes on the spring, and then the positive end goes on this kind of flat thing like that. And you can see you've got those two prongs, just orient it with the hole and then screw the cap on and you're good to go, assuming you have charged batteries. All right, I'm actually going to use the 219 version for the, uh, for the interface portion of this. Again, Eagle Tech has a lot going on, especially in their newer lights. A lot of stuff you can do with the interface. So keep in mind that this part is going to take a minute. I'll do a more abbreviated part at the end like I always do. But uh, side switch, rear switch, both do the same thing. There's no interface difference between the two. So I'm just going to use the side switch so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So if you press it, it'll turn the light on. Press it again, it'll turn it off. You also have momentary. So if you press and hold, you can see you have momentary. I think it's a half second or more than you have the momentary. Kind of a cool feature. I actually use that a lot myself. Uh, if you have it turned on in any mode, if you press and then press and hold, you have strobe. So you can get into that from any of the different outputs, any of the different modes or anything like that. So you can get to strobe from any mode, kind of a cool feature, uh, including off. So you can get right to it from off, release it, and it'll go back into the mode you last had it in. To cycle down to the other outputs when you have it turned on, or you can do this when it's turned off, doesn't matter either way, you loosen the head and it'll cycle through all your different outputs. So you have four different outputs in your regular operating mode. And then there's also a tactical mode, which I'll show you how to get into that here in just a second. And of course, if you're not messing with the head, turn it off, turn it back on, you're gonna have that mode memory, unless you do it really fast like I did, and you'll have the uh, strobe. Uh, one thing you also kind of saw there is that in any mode, if you press and hold, it'll go right into the max output. So you have that turbo output access, 
plus the strobe access for mini mode, another cool feature that it has. You also have some flashing modes. So these are relatively hidden. You're not gonna get into these by accident. I suppose you could, but uh, you kinda have to do this on purpose. That little flash you saw is the batteries are getting low, so I'll charge these before they go outside. Uh, so if you're in the first position, so head tightened, go from that between that and the third or fourth position, and then back to the first really quickly, it'll switch between all your different flashing modes. You have a couple different strobes, you have a, a signal flashing mode, you have a couple of different SOS versions, you have a beacon flashing mode, you have a really low flashing mode, all kinds of different modes that you have in there that you can choose. And then it'll start cycling through them again. So lots of different flashing modes for all kinds of different situations. You also have what they call their tactical mode group. So this is the regular one where you just have the four different outputs. You also have the tactical mode. And the way to do that is if you have it in the head tightened, there it goes with that uh, low battery flash again, <laughs> uh, go between head tightened and then the second position 10 times in less than five seconds. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that real quick and see if we can pull it off. Usually do it a couple extra times just to make sure. And the way to tell that you did it is uh, if you have it in the head tightened, you start loosening it. The second one is gonna be, I believe, 12% of the output. And then you have your strobe and then your really fast strobe. One thing to note is that uh, you do have access to the strobe. Like I said, you have instant access to the strobe from any mode of any of the groups or anything like that you do not have instant access to those other flashing modes. So if you do the loosen and tighten, you can see it doesn't go into that. So it just has the two outputs and then the two different uh, strobes. So there is a lot going on in the interface, but as you saw, most of that stuff is hidden. You know, you're not gonna get into it by accident or you shouldn't get into it by accident. So uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, going into all these flashing modes or anything like that on accident. And if you do happen to do the double tap on the strobe, just let go and uh, it'll go back into whatever you had it in last. So lots of versatility in this, lots of different things you can go in. I find these lights really, really useful. I really like the SX and the MX series of lights. I find myself using these lights and the uh, SX25 L3 a lot. I really like them. So again, let's go over the interface real quick. Uh, so you have the switch on the side, switch on the rear. Either one does the same thing. Switch on the rear, you're only gonna get with the kit version. So you tap it to turn the light on, tap it again to turn it off. Press and hold will get you momentary. When you have it turned on, if you, uh, or if I'm off, you press and then press and hold, it'll go right into strobe. From any of the outputs, if you press and hold, it'll go right into the max output. and It'll do a momentary of that. So when you loosen or you uh, release it, it'll go back into that, that other output that you had it in last. Uh, we have it in the tactical mode right now. I showed you a little while ago how to switch between that and the regular mode. Uh, so you have four different outputs in the regular mode and you just loosen the head to get to those and then two outputs and then the two strobes in the tactical mode. So a lot of stuff going on with this light and I'm not done. <laughs> There's actually some stuff to show you with the kit version of this. Let me grab that stuff. All right, I showed you the stainless steel bezel, the rear switch that you get. You also get a pretty nice holster. So it's a rigid holster, slide it in there, holds it in there nice and securely. It's not gonna come out. Um, unless you pull it out, of course. Some good attachment points on the back, and you slide it out whenever you need it. I'm not a holster guy, but I know a lot of our customers are. And then, to get the filters on, I find the easiest way, we actually have a lot of customers asking us how to do this, if there's a special tool. Just use the palm of your hand, just stick it up against the palm of your hand and start turning, and it comes off pretty easily. Sometimes they're on there pretty tight from the manufacturer. Uh, use a mouse pad or the bottom of your shoe or something like that, and you can get them off relatively easily. Anyway, you unscrew that and then uh, you get one of these filters and it will screw right onto the front of the light because they are threaded as well. And these are glass lenses and they have the anti-reflective coating on there. Really high quality, they do a good job with these. And then you have the colors. So the different filters that you get with the kit version, you have red, yellow, blue, green, and then a diffuser. Uh, I really like the diffuser. I'll take the red and the diffuser outside when we go into the outside portion, just so you can see what they do. Because I think the diffuser is a really cool option. It makes just a super spread out beam, which I find very, very useful. So yeah, that's the other stuff that you can get with the kit version. Pretty cool option. And uh, again, if you want to get all that stuff, plus the, uh, plus the batteries and the charger and all that kind of stuff, we have bundles, just so you don't have to worry about what stuff works together and you know the best options and that kind of. Kind of stuff. All right.
showed you all the different things about the light and the kits and all the interface and everything like that. Let's go ahead and take both of these outside and we'll show you how they do outside. And again, I'll take the diffuser and the red filter as well so you can see what those look like. All right, we're outside with the two EagleTac MX25 L3C versions. It's got the big 40 mag light that I always use as a baseline. Let's go ahead and try out that mag light first. There is a little tree about 25 feet away. Dock house down there on the lake. It's about 100 feet away. Yeah, let's go ahead and try out the uh, MX's. All right, so this first one here, this is the XBG2. You can see a ton of lumens coming out of this compact little light. Just so you can see, it really is that light. Whole lot of light coming out of this thing. Nice big hot spot there in the center, so that bright part in the center and the transition to the spill or the dimmer part. You can see the spill by itself is really bright. I mean, it makes it down to that dock house 100 feet away by itself. Kind of a cool thing on there. So very usable spill for sure. We'll zoom in just so you can see just how bright it is down there. So a lot of light coming out of this compact little guy. They did a good job on these. I really like the SX and the MX series from Eagle Tech. They're all really cool lights. So we'll knock it down just so you can see what the lower levels look like. And then the lowest one, great for up close kind of stuff. Obviously a usable amount of light still, you know, doing up close kind of stuff. Uh, reading, you know, looking around in your pack or your vehicle or inside your house or something like that. Works great for that. So kind of shine it around. All right, that's the XPG2 version. Here is the Nichia 219. You can see the difference in the color temperature. So greens and browns look a little bit more green and brown. You definitely do have that lower output though, so you have to decide what's more important to you. Personally, I much prefer the higher CRI. I really like the Nichia 219. I think it's a great looking LED, but uh, it's totally a personal preference. But you can see what the dock house looks like down there, how well it's lit up still. A whole lot of light coming out of both of those. Just a different color. Shine it around a little bit. I'll show you what the lower levels look like. Knock it down a little bit. You got the third and the fourth one. Again, great for up close kind of stuff. And then when you need it, you know you got that button press to get the max output or the head twist to go up to the higher ones. Okay, we'll do them side by side. So we'll have the 219 there on the right, and then the XPG on the left or XPG2, kind of shine it back and forth. So you can see what they look like in quick succession and side by side. And I always try to get the color temperature of the video as close as to what I actually see with my eyes. So this should be pretty accurate. All right, let's try out the filters on these so you can see what those look like. All right, first off, I have the diffuser, which is my personal favorite. It's the most useful one to me because it just takes and just completely spreads out that beam, which I really like. You get that nice wide area lighting. You don't get the tunnel effect that you get with that bright hot spot. Not that you really had a problem with that, especially with this light with such a large spread out hot spot. But uh, even even better for you know putting it on the table in an emergency and you know, lighting up lighting up a whole room or just lighting up a wide area like a campsite or something like that. These diffusers are great for that. And of course, lower levels still appropriate amount of light for more up close kind of stuff, and then you get that much better battery life. Okay, so this is the 219 with the uh, with the diffuser. You're gonna get a similar effect with the XPG2. Let's go ahead and try out the red filter. All right, got the red filter on there now. Let's go ahead and try that out. So this is max output. You notice that your throw, your overall output is gonna be greatly diminished, but if you need those colors, you need the red, yellow, blue, or green, you've got a great option for that. And it still does get out there pretty well. So you can see it makes it out to the dock house for sure, but uh, the distance is gonna be greatly reduced compared to what you have without the filter. But again, if you need the color, it's a great option. Okay, let's try these lights out on a longer distance to see how they do. All right, got a longer range to work with now on the two EagleTac MX25 L3C models. Go ahead and do the uh, XPG21 first. Boat right there is about 20 feet away. Got some target set up out there, same ones we use for the long distance comparisons if you've seen those. So the first one is 50 yards, the second one is 100 yards, tree line is beyond. The tree line beyond is at 130 yards and it makes it out to all of those really, really well. Nice big floody beam. Lights up a lot of area once, just a whole lot of lumens coming out of a relatively compact light. I really like the SX and MX series from uh, Eagle Tech. I think they're really cool lights, very useful. I use my SX25 L3 a lot. I'll shine that around, show you the lower output, see what those look like. And of course the lowest, great for up close kind of stuff. Get that great battery life. Okay, let's try out the Nichia 219 version. So there, again, very different in terms of colors. I really like the Nichia 219s. I like the colors that they put out. 
really cool uh, how how good the colors are. I mean, the greens and browns look really green and brown. You're getting a lot closer to daylight, but definitely a lower output. So you have to decide which one's more important to you. For me, I like the colors better. The little bit of a decrease in output is worth it to me, but a lot of people don't. You know, they want that higher output and they want the extra lumens and they don't mind the cool white. Totally a personal preference. So again, 50 yards, 100 yards, tree line. This one doesn't have any problem making it out to all three of those. But uh, you got to some further distances and you're definitely going to notice more of a difference between the two. So shine this one around a little bit, show you the lower outputs. And then the lowest, again, up close kind of stuff. And my hand actually looks like a hand and not an <laughs> apparition. Okay, so we're going to do them side by side. So we'll have the 219 on the right and then the uh, XBG2 on the left. Kind of shine them back and forth. You can quickly see the difference. Not really a whole uh, big difference in terms of the beam or the shape and all that kind of stuff, but obviously a big difference in the color. Okay, so there you go. Those are the Eagle Tac MX25 L3C models. If you like them, you can buy them from us at goinggear.com. Any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments or any of my guys at goinggear.com. And if you like the video, please subscribe. I do a lot of gear and flashlight videos. Thanks for watching.